2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 and 15. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. A lot of people stop there, but let's keep reading for context. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. So verse 14 there is a promise of God healing the nation of Israel and certain conditions that have to be there for God to heal a nation. Instruction and righteousness. We'll get back to that in a little bit too. But you have to read verse 15. The Lord says there, Now mine eyes shall be opened and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is, that is made in this place. In other words, he says, this is the action I'm going to do because of something that you've done previously in this same chapter. You say, what was that? A lot of people will go to 2 Chronicles 7.14, but they won't read the actual context of the chapter. So go back to um, verse 12. Okay, right before, a couple verses there before verse 14. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen, chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. Sacrifice? What sacrifice? Look at the context. Jump up to verse 4 and 5 in 2 Chronicles chapter 7. This is extremely important because all the people out there that try to claim verse 14, they don't want to talk about verses 4 and 5. 2 Chronicles 7 verse 4. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 20 and 2,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. Hmm. So, in other words, God says in 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14 and 15, he says, here's what I'm going to do for your land because I've seen sacrifice. Verse 12, he talks about the sacrifice that happens in verses 4 and 5. But I want you to think about something here. Think about the scale of the animal sacrifices that King Solomon did to get God's attention. 20 and 2,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. I looked it up here, just a rough estimate. Um, I'm going to show you the, the screenshots from this. Um, first, we have uh, buying a cow. Are the cost and cuts of beef, beef worth it? Um, and then it goes down to cost of buying cow for meat in 2023, and it says about $2,200 on average, $2,100 to $2,200. So we'll go with the low range there. 22,000 oxen times 2,100, okay? That's 46200000 $46,200,000 is what that cost. That would cost today, if I say it that way. I don't know what it cost back in the Old Testament. How about the 120,000 sheep? I'll show you this. It says about two to three hundred dollars, uh, depending on where you buy and the breed of sheep you buy, whatever there. But let's say about three hundred dollars. Go with the high end there, because they would have certainly been sacrificing their best, not their worst. So we have 120,000 sheep times three hundred dollars per head of sheep. What would that equal? $36 million. So all told, Solomon, King Solomon, if he were to do this today, if we were to do this today to get God's attention, it would cost $82,200,000. Hmm. I want people to think about that. Because all the preachers out there, all the hirelings, that want people to think that there's still hope for this country, and there is still hope for this country. I will grant you that. There is still hope for this, this nation, the nation of America. Um, but they'll come out and they'll say, if we just pray and we just, we just come to church and we give our 10% tithe and, and we get real serious about Jesus and all this other stuff, um, then God will heal our land. Um, you're missing the context. And you have to understand the context here. King Solomon just got done sacrificing in today's prices over $82 million worth of animals. 
What an amazing number. 82 million, 82 million, dollars in animal sacrifices. And that got God's attention. Look at verse 14 again. If my people, which are called by my name, first of all, it's doctrinally to the nation of Israel, but uh, for instruction and in righteousness, we'll get back to that here in just a minute, shall humble themselves. How many people would really humble themselves? You go throughout the Old Testament, they're doing sin, and what are they doing? Whenever they do sin, whenever they commit sin, what do they do? They're, they're falling down, they're renting their clothes, they're ripping their shirts, they're ripping their clothes, they're throwing ash on their heads, and they're, and they're just, oh God, please forgive us. That's humbling yourself. When's the last time you saw Christians doing that? Humble themselves and pray. Well, I pray, you know, for 30 seconds before I eat a meal, and then that's pretty much it. Uh, no, you want to get God's attention. You're, you're going to have to fast and pray, is what I would say needs to be done for this nation. Um, and I don't mean pray for five minutes. You might want to pray all night. That's the kind of thing that will get God's attention. I mean, he's, you know, I'm accepting $82 million worth of animal sacrifices, but just, uh, don't worry about the prayer thing. Just five minutes is fine. No, I don't think so. And seek my face. You know, it's an interesting thing. The Bible talks about the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. And how many people really want to see the face of Jesus? You see, you go back there into the Old Testament and the children of Israel, when God comes down upon the mountain and it's smoking and burning and there's lightning and all kinds of other things, and they, they withdraw from the mountain and they're scared and they say, Moses, you talk to him. You see, it's a fearful thing to have to deal with God. All right? That's the truth of the matter. You're dealing with a perfect being that can read your thoughts and has made a record of everything you, that you've done. Do you really want to seek his face? Are you going to live according to the Bible? Well, no. You know, we just kind of have our modern church and the Bible has some good lessons in it, but we can't live like this anymore. And you think God's going to heal your land? Do you think God's going to heal this wicked nation of America? You have another thing coming. Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. And by the way, let me say this before I get into that. Seek my face. Seek the face, true face of Jesus Christ. God manifest in the flesh. Um, most people don't even believe in the Godhead doctrine. I wrote a book about it. Preached on it. You can see the videos here on YouTube. Most people don't even believe that Jesus Christ is wholly, completely God. He's just one of three gods. They call three persons. And we don't believe that way. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They're not the same. Then you have three gods. Period. If you're a Trinitarian. Uh, and they'll just lie and they'll say, no, we don't believe. No, it's just one God. It's just three different titles of gods. You know, <laughs> totally insane. But uh, people don't want to believe in the Jesus of the Bible. They create Jesus up here in their own mind. So they don't really seek the face of Jesus. In other words. But let's look at the next one. Turn from their wicked ways. Oh, you want revival? National revival here in America? Okay. Stop watching Hollywood movies. Stop listening to secular music. Start dressing more appropriately. Gender-related dressing, you know, or whatever you want to say there. Men should dress like, like men, and women should dress like women. Modest apparel. You know, women wore dresses up until the early 1900s. What happened? Show me. I mean, show me in the past any place where women were wearing pants and cutting their hair short. They weren't. Thousands of years of history, the history of mankind, and women were doing the same thing for thousands of years. And all of a sudden in the 1920s, with women's suffrage and the feminist movement that came in, they stopped wearing dresses and they started cutting their hair short and they started saying, we're just as good as men. Huh. Yeah. Um, turn from their wicked ways. I mean, how many things are, are modern Christians involved in that secular people wouldn't have done 100 years ago? Lots of things. Oh, you want the revival, do you? Really? Are you willing to turn from your wicked ways? Then, when I'll, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3.
could have gone here first. But uh, I thought I'll save this for the end. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. And there is the secret to this whole thing. Um, we are not God's people in terms of nationally. Um, nationally, the Jews could claim to be God's people because God had a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their descendants saved or lost. There's a covenant there, the Abrahamic covenant. So God could call them my people. It doesn't mean they all were automatically saved. They weren't. We can't claim that as a nation right now. I mean, how many of you really think that God's going to turn away his wrath from all the wicked people that are living in this country? Are we? Can we all claim to be God's people? No, we can't. You and I both know if you're truly born again, you realize you are a minority of a minority of a minority. I mean, we are so small in number. There's so few of us. And God's going to turn his, away his wrath from this country? No. No, he's not. Oh, but we can get all the Christian churches together and, you know, we'll get all the Christians. They're not his people. It's called by my name. They're not. The vast majority of people that call themselves Christian which you could make it kind of into a thing of a modern day called by his name. They're not Christians. They're not in Christ. They're truly not. And if all you have to do is just go up and tell them and start talking to them about the Bible, and they'll get mad just like a lost person gets mad. It's incredible. But it says there that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. You see, Bible-believing, born-again Christian, brother or sister of mine out there, it really just goes back down to one individual that you need to really think about. Obviously, if you're married, you have wife and children, you have to think about them too, but their salvation is ultimately up to them. So, 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, can you apply it to us today? Yes, if you're saved. Instruction in righteousness, which we read about there in verse 16. Reproof, correction. Doctrine, even a little bit of doctrine there. Turn from your wicked ways. Get sin pushed out of your life. Sin is all, always negative. You don't want it around. Personal freedom, personal God-given rights, personal liberty. That's what we need to concern ourselves with going forward. Um, national healing? No. There will be no national healing. Um... Solomon had to commit quite a large sacrifice to atone for the sins of the people. Uh, you say, well, we have the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Yeah, and you know what? The average person laughs at it. The average person mocks the blood of Jesus Christ. They're not interested in it. So uh, his sacrifice that he, that he did on Calvary doesn't count for lost people. So we will be seeing this nation collapsing. Um, there is no hope for the secular world in America. But there is hope for you if you're saved. And if you're lost right now and you're watching this video, if you say, I don't really know for sure if I'm saved, I'm kind of trying to work that out, um, that's a priority for you. Okay, The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, that you can know that you have eternal life. Look up the verse. We're not going to go there on this video, but look it up. Watch our salvation message. Watch some of the other salvation messages. How you can have assurance of salvation and things on this channel. Type in just type in salvation, in you know looking through this channel, and you'll see a lot of different videos, and you can watch those. It's more important than television, more important than magazines or newspapers or fiction novels that you might like to read or something. Video games. No, drop all that stuff. You need to drop it. You see, because there's a people. That can be that are saved, and that God cares about them, and He's watching over them. You know, the Apostle Paul persecuted these people, these saved people, and Jesus Christ appears to him on the road to Damascus, and he says, "Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me?" Saul never persecuted Jesus in terms of seeing him and going over and persecuting him. He never did, but he persecuted the body of Christ, the truly saved believers. And God looks down at a nation and He says. I'm watching over those, my children. There's my son over there. 
There's my daughter over here. There's a whole family right there. They're all saved. A brother and a sister and a husband and a wife. And a single woman over here and another single elderly woman, woman over there. And there's an older man right there. And there's a... And he knows. The Lord is watching over the righteous. And his ears are open to their prayers. Not quoting the scripture exactly correctly there, but you know which one I'm talking about if you're saved. Um, personal repentance. Turning from wicked ways. Lord, if there's anything in me, as we're going into this time of judgment, Lord, if there's anything in me that's, that's displeasing in thy sight, tell me what it is, Lord. I want to get it out of my life. I don't want to be displeasing to you. I want to be a good, obedient child of yours. So I hope that's been a little challenge to you. Um, 2 Chronicles 7.14, as a final hope for America? No. <laughs> America's finished as a nation. Uh, the sovereign debt crisis that we have and the, the um, military industrial complex that we've built up and all the wickedness and the pornography and the abortion and the Hollywood and, and all the rock music and things that we've put out over the years, which I used to love that stuff, uh, all the things there that I just mentioned. Um, but I got saved and I left that whole world. Goodbye. I don't want anything to do with it. And uh, our youth has been destroyed through the public school indoctrination, thinking that we just evolved from nothing, that there is no God. And they're just out there, just demoralized, sitting around playing video games, eating toxic food that's banned in other countries. <laughs> there is no hope for America. And if you go to some church building out there and they're saying that there is hope for America, you're dealing with liars. You're dealing with false prophets. Get away from them quickly. So that is going to be it, and we will see you in the next video.